think it's fair to say that smartphones pretty much rule our lives these days. Whether it's staying in touch with friends and family, or indeed accessing our bank accounts, or getting in touch with vital services, mobile phones are pretty much the way to do the majority of these things. Now, for those of us that have grown up using smartphones and other uh, technologies such as computers, that's pretty much second nature. And even for those whom smartphones and computers, etc., came in a little later in life, have also had loads of time to adapt and are probably pretty happy using the latest iPhone. But for a slightly older demographic, smartphones might be something they're having to adapt to rather than uh, wanting to adapt to or wanting to use. And that's where the product that we're reviewing today comes in, the Doro 8100. This is a smartphone that Doro says is pretty much created for seniors, people who are a little older who may not be that used to um, smartphones and smart devices. Now, if you look at it um, at first glance, this looks like a pretty standard smartphone these days. It's a six inch screen, um, slightly over HD display. You know, you've even got three cameras on the back, but there is a difference here. The difference is that there are some physical features and some software features that make this friendlier to use, easier to use, and more accessible as a result. Let's start off with the physical features. Well, firstly, we have this dock, a USB-C charging dock that the phone is really easy to place into and charge. As long as the dock is connected to power, you can charge this device as without worrying because as long as it's in the dock, you'll know it's charging. Equally, the phone can also be charged by USB-C. That's great. Uh, the front, as said, Nice large screen, easy to use, but on the back with three cameras, quite cool. More importantly, we have the response by Doro button. This is pretty much Doro's USP. The button on the back, uh, when pressed for a couple of seconds, will activate an alarm for five seconds, and it will then call a specific set of contacts that have been set up in the response by Doro app uh, and such Doro assistance app, and it will ensure that the person who has this phone who activates that alarm gets through to someone who can provide aid to them that isn't necessarily the emergency services. It's a really cool feature and it's something actually um, I have personal uh, experience of because our uh, relatives also had a phone like this. Um, it wasn't a smartphone, it was a feature phone from Doro though that had that exact feature. Very cool, very effective, it does work. Next off, we have the um, loudspeaker and we have the microphone. I think the microphone is fairly sensitive, which is good. You sound really clear, and the loudspeaker is really loud. Um, there's even a feature whereby you can press a button to increase the volume dramatically, so if you can't hear someone, you can hear someone really well. It's very, very good. It's a great feature. Lastly, the phone's IP54 rated, which means it's dust and water resistant, and I feel like the body's fairly rugged too. It could take a knock or two, and I think it would work just fine. So I think together, that pretty much provides you with the core physical features that this phone has. Now at this stage, I haven't mentioned the cost, and I think the cost is something important, because it actually only costs £200, which I think, for, for a smartphone, it's pretty affordable anyway, but for smart tech that's aimed at a specific audience, regardless of what that audience is, I think that's extremely affordable. So it's nice that Doro has really made the 8100 uh, smartphone an affordable phone. It's, a, it's definitely a good thing. The most important thing though about this phone is undoubtedly the software. The software is where the accessibility really comes in. And it's very much an action-based um, interface that they've created which guides the user through the steps to do and achieve what they want to achieve. Now, that might sound a bit fluffy, um, but actually it does work. And I'm going to walk you through some of the things this phone can do so you can see for yourself how that might work. Firstly, the only real changes I've made to this home screen is I've added the three BBC apps at the top. The rest of this is pretty much how it was, I think, when I received and set up the phone. The setup process is really key, by the way. I know I, I can't demonstrate it because I've already gone through it, but it is something I would recommend that the person that is to use this phone on a regular basis goes through with you or by themselves, as it's a really good way of getting to grips of how this phone functions and is therefore a really useful thing to go through. 
Now, as I said, it's a very action-based operating system, and the key icons here are the ones perhaps, if you're an Android user, you might not recognize. It's the camera, the help, the add, the set, and then the call, view, send, and search apps. Those applications have certainly been customized by Doro, and they're the ones that you're really gonna notice that custom touch on. Let's start off with call. So I know I want to call someone, but what do I want to do? Do I want to call a number, a contact, a recent contact, someone that you may have called recently, or your voicemail? It, it guides you through what you want to do. So you say, okay, I wanna call a number. You click a number and it'll open the phone's call app, but it's taking you directly to it. There's no middle steps. It's very direct. Conversely, if I chose to call a recent contact, it'll take me to my recent called list. I can see who I've called recently. Next, we have view. And I think view is really specific because you might think, well, view what? Messages? Okay, messages are here. But also, how about your emails, your call history, your pictures and videos? your contacts, despite the fact we had contacts in call, it's been replicated across to view as well. And I think that's important. I think that's what I really like about this operating system is it guides the user and there is no right or wrong way of achieving what you want to achieve. If you think, oh, I want to view my contacts so I can make a call, you can absolutely do that. And the app makes up for the sort of thought process that you might have, it'll help you bridge those steps. And I think that gives people more independence because they don't have to remember a specific way of doing something. They can follow their logic rather than the logic that's forced upon them. I think that's really, really clever. Equally, you might want to view your location so you can share it with someone else or your other apps. Even though your apps on the home screen are just a, a swipe away, the phone will take you to your applications if you want to. Equally, you can look at your phone information as well, such as storage, etc. The point is, whether you want to look at your messages, where they've also integrated other apps, so you download other apps, it will categorize them and add them here. WhatsApp wasn't on here by default. I added that, and then it added itself to this list. Or whether you want to view um, your, let's say, Notes app, it'll take you directly to these places. The point is, it's all very simple. The Send app follows that again. Maybe you want to send a message, you want to send an email, or you want to send a picture, or again, your location. Last but not least out of these core apps is search. And again, what do you want to do? Do you want to search for something on the internet? Do you want to search for directions? Do you want to get somewhere? Search around you. Both of those apps will take you to the Google Maps app. But more importantly, it doesn't matter what you want. It'll help to guide you to get there. We also have something like add, which I think is very clever. You want to add a contact or a note or an alarm, a time or an event, an application. The phone will help to guide you to do those things. But what if you want to set an alarm? Well, equally, it's there again. You can add an alarm or you can set it. I realize this may sound really basic, but I think that giving people the choice to do things how they want to do it is a lot more likely to give them more independence than if you're forcing them to follow a specific way. And I like what Doro has done there. Lastly, I really wanna highlight the Help app. The Help app is specifically designed to guide the user through using the phone on a regular basis. The tutorials will help you to, in the initial setup, but equally, if you want help around how to use it, they've even integrated TeamViewer so if you click the remote help, then you'll, you'll be able to connect to a relative via team viewer who can view your phone and make those changes for you. This phone software is very much focused around independence and making the phone easy to use. At the moment, I have the font size set fairly small, but you can make it a lot larger and therefore make it even easier to use. They've even simplified the camera app. And in terms of the camera app, you can choose between video and photo, really specifics, but you also have those custom more modes such as macro modes that are behind that view, but you don't have to use them. At this point, I'd be remiss not to mention the cameras. You need to take in context, this is a 200 pound smartphone, so the cameras are a little bit lacking, if I'm honest, they don't look amazing, but they're more than enough to share snaps with family. They're enough to take some quick memory photographs without any problems, and the photos look fine. It just isn't 
quite what you're used to if you're coming from a thousand pounds iPhone. But equally, that's five times the cost and I wouldn't necessarily say that it's five times worse. Of course, this phone is a full Android smartphone. So at the end of the day, you can download any other apps. And I think that is important because it means that you can add your banking app. You can add the app that you use for local transit. At the end of the day, you're not limited completely to what Doro is prescribing. Instead, what Doro provides makes using the phone easier, easier and you can stick to those if you want to, but equally the whole world of the Google Play Store is at your fingertips. The Doro Response app, I just thought I'd mention as well. Um, I know I mentioned how it works earlier, but I would thought I would demonstrate this. So if I take my iPhone out of my pocket, my phone is now on silent mode and face down. In theory, this phone should not ring. But if I now hold down the button on the back of this phone, which then will start a countdown on the actual phone here, you get an audible alarm. It takes five seconds. And now it's sent the alert out. You can actually hear my watch there, which vibrated, which is also on silent. And if I open up my phone and I see I have a critical alarm, which is why my watch or my phone would go off regardless of whether it's on silent or not, I can open it up and it says um, there's a, an alert that's been received. It's recorded the location from the phone and sent it to me so I know exactly where I am. Forgive me, I'm not going to show you that because I don't think you need that information. Um, but if I click accept on my iPhone, it will then call the phone that has sent the alert. And rather than relying on the person that received that phone call to answer it, it answers automatically to speakerphone. And I think that is where the value is here. It is the fact that this phone is designed for people who might be more vulnerable and it ensures that they can receive help in the easiest way possible. Now you might notice I'm also wearing a snazzy smartwatch. Um, well, I say it's not a smartwatch. It's an activity tracker watch with smart features. It's the Doro watch. It's the companion watch for this phone. It costs 120 pounds. I'm gonna be doing a short separate video on that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go through the Doro 8100 first. I think in conclusion, for 200 pounds, it is a very capable phone. It is not the best smartphone that you're ever gonna come across. But if you want a phone that has been tailored for an audience that might not be used to using smart technology or needs a little bit more guidance, then you could do a lot, lot worse than this. I do think it is a very clever device. I think it is something that someone that perhaps hasn't had much experience using a smartphone by themselves, it will give them more independence by guiding them through how to use it. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions about the Doro 8100, feel free to pop them in the comments section below. Equally, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as it really does help me out. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.